This morning, families in Uvalde may still be going through one of the most extensive accounts of the shooting at Robb Elementary that we have yet seen. Now, as you can imagine, this process has not been easy. It was seven weeks before any of us saw for ourselves what happened inside the school. And it wasn't until yesterday where we received an even bigger picture. Yeah, we want to take a moment to remind you why all of this is happening. And it's the 21 lives lost at the hands of a gunman who entered the school and wasn't taken down for more than an hour. Nearly two months later, we are still learning just what took place on May 24th. Now, Chris Adegui is with us this morning in the studio. Chris, now we have this report plus some new body camera footage. Again, uh, really just not a good look for responding law enforcement. No, Kara, and until this point, much of the response focused heavily on the district police chief, Pete Arredondo, but the House Committee's 77-page report says that the failures extend far beyond him and was released the same day. New body camera video reveals even more. Could you tell me your name? Anything I can help, please? Please put your firearm down, sir. We don't want anybody else hurt. That is the voice of Arredondo trying to negotiate with the shooter. Much of the new video shows us officers doing a lot of standing and waiting, like what we saw from the hallway surveillance. But there are some new revelations. The body camera video that was released by the city of Uvalde shows officers helping children escape a classroom through the window at 11.59 a.m. That's about 26 minutes after the shooter entered and 23 minutes after the first officers arrived. There's also a moment where you hear a radio dis dispatcher give officers this information that comes nearly 40 minutes after the shooting began. Now, some of the other findings released in the House Committee report, they say systemic failures and poor decision making not only by local police, but there was also bad decision making by 91 state police officers and 149 federal U.S. Border Patrol officers as well. It found that in total there were 376 law officers who responded. A number the report, report points out is larger than the manpower that defended the Alamo. And they also say there was no clear, obvious, or effective incident commander. And even though he received much of the blame, Arredondo has told media he did not consider himself the commander on scene. And this was not just a critique of law enforcement. The report also has some criticisms of the shooter's family for failing to recognize many warning signs that we'll talk about in 30 minutes. So it just sounds like a ton of confusion. Nobody knew who was in charge. Well, once we saw the shooting happen in May, it caused a lot of school districts across the not just the state, but the country to kind of look at their safety protocols, kind of reconsider what they've done. Uh, I know that this report called out the Uvalde School District mm -hmm. in general, but it said a lot of school districts haven't followed mm -hmm. proper protocols. Yeah, the report did not hold back on the school security. In fact, it says that the police and the staff at the school did not stick to the plan they had in place, despite the training they received on it. The report actually called it a culture of noncompliance with mm -hmm. things like unlocked doors, propped open doors, and also the faculty, they say, did not take those alerts seriously. A lot of times when you go through those drills, you get in the mode of thinking, oh, this is just a drill. Mm -hmm. In this case, it definitely was not. God, Chris, mm. just failure after failure. Absolutely. I mean, 77 pages worth. Okay, thank you for that. We know this is a lot to take in. Um, you know, we've been digesting it along with you, and you can find an even more detailed uh, mention that Chris talked about that 77-page report, really just failure after failure. Right now it's at WFAA.com if you'd like to take a look at it.